And so the first announcement today, to answer all of the questions I've been receiving from a lot of people uh, from here in Iowa and across the country about an independent run, I will not run as an independent candidate for governor. However, I will be very, very involved in this fall election and in this fall campaign. And the issues that motivated me a lot when I was a candidate for governor, they still motivate me today. And I would say that our grassroots network and our grassroots support that delivered over 92,000 votes on June 8th, it has not diminished, it has only grown. I am hearing from people that I've never heard from before of saying we need to take a stand. And so what we are going to do is we are going to take all of our effort, all of our energy, all of our resources, all of our network, and we are going to become crystal clear in our focus on unseating three justices on the November 2 ballot. Because I believe we need to hold a court in check. In 1998, the legislature that makes the law was very clear. The governor that executed the law signed that law, that legislation into law. In the Defense of Marriage Act, that marriage is between one man and one woman. On April 3, 2009, unelected representatives of our state decided to turn that law over. They said that they're going to hold up Iowa's Constitution to an evolving standard. They do not get to evolve our Constitution. Only we, the people, get to evolve our Constitution. When they struck it down, they said Iowa will be a same-sex marriage state. They don't get to create the law. Only the legislature gets to make the law. They said all 99 counties will follow suit. They do not get to execute law. Only the governor gets to execute law. And I believe what we're seeing today, not only right here in the state of Iowa as it relates to marriage, but what we saw what a judge did in California just a few days ago on a constitutional amendment, a vote of the people, of saying, you know, we can even undo that, is that more than ever we need to hold this court in check. And that is what our plan is to do. When I leave here today, I will be going into intense strategy sessions with the best and the brightest from around the state and around the country. And we will be unleashing a full effort and campaign in the next coming days. And we will all let you know when that is going to take place. So, the impetus of this press conference is, first and foremost, I am not going to be an independent candidate for governor. And second, we are going to turn all of our energy, efforts, resources, and passion at unseating three justices that are up for retention on the November 2nd ballot. With that, I'll take any questions. What, what, did you participate in the campaign against Judge Neary? If so, what did you learn? I, I was pretty much a bystander uh, in in that campaign. I believe I uh, I spoke for just a few minutes at a rally that was held in Sioux City, and that was it. I think the difference between the Judge Neary retention vote, which I believe was 2004, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and this retention vote in 2010, uh, I think the people of Iowa and I think the people across this country are saying the courts are taking too much power. Uh, when you have my mom talking to me this morning about what the judge did in California, uh, they're starting to pay attention to what's happening. When uh, amnesty may get decided by a court in Arizona, you know, the whole deal on illegal immigration, I think people are starting to take note. I believe this election to unseat these three justices may be if not one of the most the most important campaign and election in the entire country. Have you lined up support from the Republican Governors Association? We have had, not the Republican Governors Association, but we do have some initial support that is going to make this a very real effort. I may be wrong about this, but I think the Polk County District Judge who was involved in this case is also up for election this time. Why, why not include him? Okay, let's include him. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay with that. How much but our focus is going to be on the three Supreme Court justices. So you know, our campaign will be strictly focused on the three Supreme Court justices. How much money do you anticipate raising and putting into the service? 
that will be probably determined in the next coming days as well. We'll probably release that as well. This is sort of unprecedented. Is this going to put the whole independent judiciary concept in Iowa on its ear? Well, it depends what you mean by independent judiciary concept on its ear. If we're saying that the judiciary can make law because they're independent, then yeah, it should put it on its ear. Uh, but I do believe in, in that way. I believe we also need to be talking about the way we appoint justices in the state of Iowa. Uh, I think what we need to be looking at is maybe the governor appointing justices and going through a Senate confirmation, just like they do at the federal level, uh, versus br having the Bar Association bring three justices for the governor to pick one. If the governor doesn't pick one, the chief justice picks one. I think that system needs to be re-looked at as well. But this effort and this campaign is directly to hold the Supreme Court in check by working on an effort to unseat three justices that decided that they were the legislature, that decided they were the governor, that they decided they were the kingmakers in the state of Iowa. We need to vote them off. They make thousands of uh, rulings. Uh, this one should be the, the one case that decides all? I think what it is, Rod, and you heard me say in my campaign, is if they will do this to marriage, every other one of your freedoms is up for grabs. That's why in Arizona you see illegal immigration maybe be decided by the court. You've seen at the Supreme Court level 5-4 decisions on the Second Amendment right. If a judge in California will reverse a constitutional amendment by the vote of the people, who says they're not going to throw away your Second Amendment or your Tenth Amendment uh, or your private property, eminent domain? So even though there may be some people in Iowa that agree with the opinion that the Supreme Court made, there's a lot of other freedoms at risk if you continue to allow them to go down this path. And that's why I believe we can witness success on November 2. How is the Prop 8 ruling? In your opinion, how does it affect the push here in Iowa for a marriage amendment? Does that change your opinion of whether we need to amend the Constitution here? Well, I still think it would be a good move to let the people of Iowa vote on this issue and to have a constitutional amendment. But I think what it does, it highlights this effort to get rid of three Supreme Court justices that choose to make law, because if they're willing to take a constitutional amendment, a vote of the people, and by the way, the California, if you recall, they voted in mass for our current president, Barack Obama. Those same people who voted for Barack Obama also voted for one man, one woman marriage. And now you have a judge saying, ah, we don't care what you say. Uh, you know, we'll overturn that as well. So I think what it'll do is it will attract a lot more enthusiasm, energy, and momentum here in the state of Iowa for this effort that we're talking about. The fact that this was unanimous leads some people to conclude that this wasn't necessarily a uh, uh, rogue judges making a decision that they all were of a like mind that, that, that they were following the law. I believe, Rod, and maybe it's the conspiracy theorists in me, I believe the reason it was unanimous was to protect their seats on the court. When they make a ruling of a controversial nature and decision, uh, most of the time you'll see it's a unanimous decision. Why not mount a campaign to make sure that congressional candidates that are like-minded with you are elected rather than the Supreme Court justice. Because after all, we need a federal constitution now. Well, well believe me, uh, I will advocate for uh, congressional candidates who are like-minded with me. I mean, I'll, I'll work very hard for them to get elected. But the other part of it is, is, and this is my whole theory behind the executive order, letting the people of Iowa vote on a marriage amendment, that's one step. But what does that do to hold a court in check? Uh, having a constitutional convention, to me that's reckless in the first place, but what does that do to hold a court in check? You need to hold a court in check. And the way you hold a court in check is you terminate the people who make decisions that are not theirs to make. Or you have a governor who says, I'm going to issue an executive order that says, you stepped outside of your boundaries, we're going to hold you in check. That's what the balance of powers, that's what the separation of powers was supposed to be about. So to me, this is a big issue and it's a very important issue in this fall election.